Okay, I've been meaning to make this for about two years now. Um, I finally got round to it. This is my Fender um, Precision Bass uh, Deluxe USA, whatever the proper name for it is. It's from 1997, and this is what we're going to do a whole load of tests on, so sort of see how the sounds you can make from this. Um, basic spec, it's obviously got your standard p bass body. I think this one is Ash, or Swamp Ash, because that's what they make the Deluxe models out of. Um, there's tuners, the new models don't have these anymore, these are more kind of round as you can see, the new ones are thinner, look at the profiles, because they've got a bit of extra weight there, um, obviously open at the back. Um, there's a lot of debate over whether this extra weight here changed the tone or not, um, I'm not too sure, but if you think Gibson and Fender both put the ultralight tuners on their um, top of the range models, so you know maybe it's got something to do with it, maybe at some point I'll take this out and put the new ones in make a video of it, see if there's any difference on sound. Um, but I'd imagine it's minimal compared to playing. Um, when I got this, this was this nut was filed down um, to make it like a five string, so you have um, B, E, A, D, rather than standard E, A, D, G. So this nut here is a graph tech nut, which I've fitted in. Um, you can see that actually, focusing this camera is awful, but you can just about see um, some of the wood was nicked out there. Um, but the second hand, and being a maple fretboard, you get this you know, the damage along the bottom there. So I guess some of the previous owner must have worn rings or something. Because um, I know I, I kind of think I should do some repair work on this, but at the same time, it's kind of cool getting this vintage and um, road-worn, sort of loved and used look, which your maple fretboards kind of get. But anyway, um, see so dot inlay is pretty standard there. Um, with all American um, deluxe uh, bases by Fender, it's got the truss thread nut at the bottom base here, rather than the top. Um, I don't know what the reason for that is, other than it looks a bit better in my opinion. Maybe it's got more stability or something, I don't know, but that's how that is. Um, standard tortoise shell, or Tortex pick guard. Um, I just think it's really bad because there's always sort of plastic on the base, which you're spending about a few thousand pounds on, but that's how they all are. What makes the deluxe model kind of different is these sort of special features. Obviously that is the vintage um, sounding p bass pickup, which every single um, p bass have, so that's nothing special. But you've got the double J there. Now, I might get more specs on this, but as far as I can tell, that is the same spec as the American Deluxe Jazz pickup, but rather than have one, it's got two of them. So you get the humbucking sound, you get a deeper, more fuller tone. Um, as you know, if you listen to, um, on guitar, a single coil guitar versus a humbucker, you get the extra power, and that's extra grunt. Um, the bridge, um, again, this is the old style, which is the sort of thin, um, bit of bent bridge. The newer ones have extra mass around the back, which might be better for when you string over the top like I have here. Um, there's so much debate over is this sound better, the new one sound better, but that's how it is. I might at some point change this out because I'm not overly happy with it. Um, but look at the saddles here. Can't really see too well, but they're sort of knurled. Um, so rather than have one groove sit on, you can choose whichever groove you have, which I guess means you can choose the spacing for your fingers here if you find them sort of closer together or wider apart or these close or whatever. Um, I suppose it might be good for slap bass, um, which I don't play. But there, yeah, that's pretty normal there. Um, again, not, I haven't owned too many fenders and bits over time, so I'm not too sure what's clear and what's standard. But if you see here, this is all strung over the top um, with the dio strings. Um, you can also string through the body, which gives you that really... All right, I think it looks really cool. I do prefer the tone um, strung through the body. You get more of the... Natural woody sound, that's how I can describe it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the bridge, it's nothing too special there. Um, unlike other P bases, we're actually going through the side of the base for the um, out jack rather than on the top. I really, really like that. I'm not overly sold on their kind of jack they use, um, I prefer the Gibson standard version where you've got the sort of thing clicking in place and locking it, but it stays in there, it works really well. Um, obviously, this is where it gets a bit more custom. Over here, we've got um, your volume as completely normal. Try and 
we managed to get some better look view. So you can't see how loud it is. There's no dial numbers or anything like you have on some guitars, but that doesn't ever bother me. So volume that just stays full on. I'm actually considering removing this part and having a blank there. Um because I always have it on full. Um this one here is really cool. Um if we turn it there in the middle, it kind of just sort of clicks and semi locks a bit. That means that both pickups are on. So we're taking a sound from both of them. As we move to the right, or move clockwise, we start turning this humbucking bridge off and turning the P on. So when it's all the way to the, um, to the clockwise, this is a standard P bass. We turn it all the way to the left, it is your something completely different, a bit like a jazz bass but with more aggression. Um, and the really cool thing is I don't really like all the way left or right. Um, it's really cool to have maybe 45 degrees here, so it's almost all P but with a bit of um, bridge mixed in. You get this really nice sort of growly sort of sound that just, it sounds more fuller than your standard P bass, but it has that kind of really cool tone, so that's amazing. That's great but when you're playing um, a song for the first time, you can just try to find your groove by just playing with one switch alone. The other two things which is kind of new, um, which again all the deluxe bass has, have uh, these three pots here. You got your treble again. All these pots, they kind of you get to the middle and they kind of click in place. But you got your treble here. You got your bass. Um, so you got your mids. You got your bass and you got your treble. So just by playing with these three knobs, you can really dial in any tone you like. So it is the onboard preamp. And back here we've got the battery in there. One thing I don't particularly like about this bass is that this is from 1997, and a year later. They changed the electronics and brought in a um, 18 volt preamp. This one, I think, is a 9 volt preamp, as far as I know, which means that I can only put one battery in the cavity, and that means the battery lasts half as long. Additionally, the headroom on the preamp is not as good, so the tone is not as you know, you get that sort of the clipping kind of sound, it's a, bit, a little bit more compressed than you would do on the later model. So I'm thinking about changing out this for a Seymour Duncan preamp at some point. Um, I'm going to try and get some opinions on that. Um, I'm not I'm not overly sold on this pickup here. It doesn't have quite the bite I'd like. Um, but the Seymour Duncan replacement pickups for this tend to be the sort of vintage blues, slightly jazzy sound, which I think actually describes this pretty well. And I want more of a kind of Thunderbird growly sound. Um, I might have to go and buy a Thunderbird, frankly, but so I'm pretty stuck with that for a while. I'm going to be buying a Simon Duncan Baselines Quarter Pounder SPB3 pickup here. Um, because that's I've wanted that pickup since I bought this guitar and just have not got back around to buying it. So in the near future, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the vintage Fender pickup. And this, remember, is the Deluxe USA model, so it's the top of the range um, pickup for the time, versus the um, Seymour Duncan. Just see the differences are, how this tone compare. So if you've got a P bass, is it worth going from this to another um, bass? Also, I'm going to be doing um, a few videos just playing around with these sounds here. Uh, in particular, how we, you can get from this one bass with these two pickups set up and, that's, um, and these dials here, you can dial in every sound from the Beatles to Tool. Um, it is kind of incredible. Like with one amp, um, using my uh, Line 6 Pod X3, you can really just get any tone. Actually, no, sorry, I'll scrap that. On one amp setup on the um, Line 6 Pod, say SVT with an 8x10 speaker, you can get pretty much the Beatles sound and the Tool sound by just playing the dials. And if imagine if you take that next level and change the amp setting or change the amp in your room, you will completely dial it in. Um, the only other things that I've changed since now, obviously it's your P bass, amazing contour bike, so comfy and just great. Um, and neck plate there with Fender, it's really cool. Um, is I've changed the strap locks here. Um, at the time when I got this, I was playing a band, jumping around a lot on stage. So it was kind of useful to get um, 
you know, the strap locks there so that I could get the base on and off easily and it just wouldn't come off. I do have the original somewhere, but that's that. Um, as it's really sunny actually, we can see this. This colour is... When I bought this base I was only 650 including a hard case in the shop and I just jumped at it because this is shoreline gold. As you can see it's just kind of flex and you know it's it's a really rare colour. I've not seen another Fender base like this. Um, I've definitely not seen another um, one of these models with this colour so I think it's pretty rare. It must have been a low order or something or a special custom shop. Um, but anyway, in the sunlight you get this amazing sort of silvery gold sort of sparkly colour but in low light conditions it looks silver so it really does change colour depending on what you are doing and the light settings and I really like that um, I'm very tempted to change this to a black pit guard because I think that the sort of silvery gold and black would look really ultra cool but for now I'm pretty happy with this because it looks goldy and shimmery um, so yeah that is the base we're going to be doing a whole load of stuff with um, Again, none of these videos are ever trying to show how amazing any of my stuff is, or trying to show how amazing I am as a player. It's about sort of the setup and the tech, and how just changing small things can create a massive difference to your sound. I'm also going to do one about doing setups because the amazing thing is this is obviously an incredible bass. I mean, uh, okay, the bass itself doesn't make you a good player, but it is the best Fender I've ever played, and I absolutely love it. But if you have the pickup set up wrong, and you have the um, truss rod set up wrong, the height of the nuts, the height of the saddles, the way the saddles themselves curve in bits, if that's not done right, then your tone will be sucked, your playability will be sucked, it won't feel natural, it won't feel good. There's just so many small things you can do which just bring the whole bass alive. So that's it for now, I've gone over um, the two minutes I intend this to be. So we're going to try and get some other videos up really soon and probably get some more music videos as well. So 